I got a big mouth, can't help it. I talk from my heart, I'm real, you know what I'm saying? Whatever comes, comes. But my controversy probably. And it's not my fault. I'm trying to find my way in the world, you know, I'm trying to be somebody instead of just make money off everybody. You know what I'm saying? And so I, I go down paths that haven't been traveled before and I usually mess up. But I learn, you know what I'm saying? I come back stronger. You know, I'm not talking ignorant, you know what I'm saying? So I obviously put thought into what I do. I got a big mouth, can't help it. I talk from my heart, I'm real, you know what I'm saying? Whatever comes, comes. But my controversy probably. And it's not my fault. I'm trying to find my way in the world, you know, I'm trying to be somebody instead of just make money off everybody. You know what I'm saying? And so I, I go down paths that haven't been traveled before and I usually mess up. But I learn, you know what I'm saying? I come back stronger. You know, I'm not talking ignorant, you know what I'm saying? So I obviously put thought into what I do. Your karma, everything that you do bad comes back to me. So anything that I'm doing that's bad, I'm gonna have to suffer for. But in my heart, I think what I'm doing is right. You know what I mean? And I think heaven is just when you sleep, you sleep with a good conscience. You don't have nightmares. Good hell. What's going on, everyone? I'm so happy you decided to join me on this journey called Podcast Life. We will be discussing topics like celebrity gossip, life lesson, politics, and etc. This is a judge-free zone. Think of me as that homegirl that is so down to earth that put a smile on your face every time we talk. The motto is, never judge a book by its cover. You have to open it and read all the chapters to understand. And it's okay to disagree, but just stand on what you're saying. All right, then let's get on into it. Uh, let's get on into some hot topics today. We will be talking about Beyonce, she's first up, and her Ivy Park collection. Now, everybody know every time that Beyonce drops her Ivy Park collection, it goes bonkers. It's sometimes sold out within minutes. By the time you put it in your car and go to the checkout, it's already, you know, they're already telling you that it's sold out. And I always thought that was kind of interesting when it's come down to, you know, different type of situations and celebrities when they drop different items and stuff like that. But I don't know if it has something to do with time zone or, uh, or the system and the website crashing. So, it just all depends. Anyways, Beyonce has the Ivy Park collection in uh, Adidas stores, and it's not selling. And she's th uh, she is taking it off the market and getting it out of the stores before the value of the clothing line goes downhill. And next thing you know, we seeing it in DDs and Ross. Now, ain't nothing wrong with some DDs and Ross because it ain't what you're wearing, how much it costs, it's how you wear. I can address a lot of people in some Walmart and thrift clothes, and that's just that's just what it is. That's just on period. So. She's taking it off the market. She's taking it. Well, she's taking it out of the stores because I think she does not want the investors and, you know, to see that because it does not look good when you have uh, items in the store and you cannot sell out. But then you sell out on your website within 30 seconds. Some not adding up, whether you're Beyonce or just the average Joe selling items, it just does not look right, you know, for as a marketing sale. Because a lot of times I do feel like that these business, uh, the people, these entrepreneurs and these celebrities, when they're drop stuff, they only drop a certain amount. It's a good market strategy. They only drop a certain amount. They tell you it's discontinued because they want the uh, the height of the item to go up and up each time they're for the drop now one thing that beyonce did do when she was advertising she really gave the stuff away to a lot of celebrities and nothing is wrong with them because that is good advertisement if you want to get it if you're in any type of business like if you get your business out and give out like merchandise to people that has a following you will uh you will see an increase in your income and your inventory because the simple fact is that it's people out there that want an item just because a certain celebrity is wearing it oh my gosh uh rihanna got that i want that oh beyonce wears that i want that so you will have people that they have a crowd they have a following so therefore they will sell out as soon as they drop something now this reminds me of the b simone 
this reminds me of B. Simone. And the reason why I say that is because I remember when she first got that book out and stuff like that, people was buying it up. And even with her lip gloss and stuff like that, and she was just like, it's sold out, it's sold out. Now she has been in the big, uh, she has been in the public eye a lot for a lot of negative things or whatever. So I do feel like uh, that has affected her brand. But I did notice that she had put some clothing line called Baby Girl and Foot Locker. I want to say, and it had like the baby girl slogan and stuff like that. And I noticed that in the store, it was not selling out. Like in Foot Lockers, it's not selling out or it has not sold out. But every time she sells something on her website, whether well, it's lip gloss, merchandise, or whatever, it's always, oh, hurry up and get it. It's sold out. Or, oh, we just put out, you know, a hundred more. Hurry up and get it because it's going to be sold out. So I do think it's all cap. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, when it comes down to this merchandise. And I do feel like uh, Ivy Park probably was not selling out in the stores. And my resource, when I did my research on it, a lot of people said that the reason why it probably was not selling out is because that you had to make an appointment to even come in and look at the clothes or, you know, to buy an item. And I'm not trying to be funny, but it's like, it's not that serious. Now, you telling me that I got to make an appointment like what the hell or like oh you have to make an appointment just to even come in here and look at these clothes like that's extremely too much and if that's the case then she might as well open up her own store that only cater to her brand i'm just saying because if i go to the mall and if i want to go buy something i can see a line because people stand out lines in stores just for jordans and stuff like that but when it come down to you want me to set an appointment you know what i'm saying like i'm going to the doctor office like you the doctor to college nah it's not that serious okay so that was uh that was one topic okay trump gets kicked off of twitter that was another topic that has been going around trump getting kicked off of twitter oh my goodness they they took his twitter away i think they said at first they was taking it away for 13 to 14 days um, and a lot of people were saying that they are so happy and they are so great. But then on the flip side, a lot of people were saying like, this is interfering with freedom of speech. Now, do I feel like that Trump Twitter should have been taken away? And my thoughts on it, I really, I really have to say that it doesn't matter if his Twitter was taken away or not. People is going to do what they want to do. And you're right. It is an easy influence when you're out here spewing different type of stuff and you're the president. To me, that was just, ooh, ghetto. You're ghetto as hell. For you to be the president of the United States, I have never seen not one president consistently be on social media like Twitter, tweeting stuff, and then saying all type of stuff. Like, I was just waiting on them to say his page was hacked. Never was hacked. How you the president and you are just consistently going in on Twitter of all platforms where you have all type of teenagers and, you know, young adults and commentators for YouTube and comedians. And it's just like you just then came on down here with us and, you know, you playing the dozens, you cracking jokes and saying what's on your mind. You just tripping out. So do I feel like his Twitter should have been taken away? Yes, because at the end of the day, when you are a celebrity, you have to be careful how you use your platform. And because, like I say, you will have a following. It's people out here that really go to war behind these celebrities, as you can see, even with Trump and, you know, all this raid in the White House and stuff like that. It's people out here that it's celebrities out here that have a following that ain't never seen them, ain't never talked to them, ain't tweeted them, ain't never wrote them a letter, ain't never paid a bill. And these people will be diehard fans and they don't play. And I never understood that. So it is a dangerous thing because just like these celebrities end up having stalkers you know i think chris brown ended up with a whole woman in his house and she was madly in love and she just was effectuating this type of relationship that they had in their mind so you do have to be careful and by him being a president it's best that he stays off of twitter you know what i'm saying because at the end of the day it was only getting worse it was like People is not, we're not looking at it and be like, oh, okay, that's just Trump talking noise. People was really out here going to war and finna go off. So, yeah, definitely Trump 
that's a uh that's a good thing only thing that i do have to say i don't i disagree with is uh, a lot of people were saying that it violates the freedom of speech and i agree with that because you have to be careful because if they silence or they take down the united you know the president of the united states title and you know what I'm saying platform you got to understand, yeah, I got to keep that same energy when they sit up here and try to take down one of our leaders or someone that speak up for us. And then it's kind of like, well, y'all didn't say nothing when he, you know what I'm saying, when we took this platform for Trump. So we don't care if this person using this platform to spread positivity or awareness of certain situation. We don't want to, you know what I'm saying, we don't want to uh, have them on the platform because it can influence a lot of you guys' minds. So to me, that's kind of scary if you take Trump out the situation and he, uh, and and them taking down people platforms for speaking their mind and saying something because you got to think about it social media that's what that's what people use it for freedom of speech to say what they want to say whether it's truth or you know all high sides and etc and etc so trump is off for twitter and uh speaking of trump his supporters plan to uh go to war come back around January the 20th when it comes down to swearing in the new president, Joe Biden. So this is what irritates me about this situation because I feel like that if they would have handled it properly, and you know what I'm saying, and the first time when they raided that White House and stuff like that, it would not be a way in hell that these people be talking about they gonna come back for some more. These people, these Trump supporters remind me of a person who talked out that noise. You know how you get into it with somebody, they talk out that noise, and then you finally get on what they want, and then this thing now they like, okay, y'all know you beat me up. But I'm still, you know, like, it's going to be a rematch. You be like, golly, you know what I'm saying? Like, you didn't have enough the first time, but I can't even say that these people had enough the first time. Just think about it. Like, black people, we had to make it be known that we wanted a peaceful protest, and we just wanted justice to be served. And these people are sitting over here saying that they're going to come back. Like, oh, yeah, we'll be back. We're coming back. So the, I, I do kind of, you know, next week, a lot of stuff is going on. People are closing down schools. Some people are not even having uh you know their business open because they're scared of what might happen and what might occur on this day and what all these trump supporters might do not only in washington but in their hometown because like i say this is something that is organized but if they would have bust the cap and start pepper spraying and tasering and you know getting them sticks and beating them people down and they die gone back because they so-called fruit for their life the same way they claim they fear for their life when they come out to black people, then we won't have to worry about them talking about coming back because they know we coming behind anything we say. So they're saying that they're going to hype up security and stuff like that. Hopefully, if they do hype up security, come on now. You know what I'm saying? Put that pressure on their behind. And then I guarantee you, we won't even be having this conversation again. Okay. Next subject, Mary J. Blige. She had a birthday. Uh, she turned 50. Oh my gosh. The definition of black don't crack. And uh, people are going in about Tyrese, Tyrese grabbing her leg. And I was just like, uh uh-uh. uh, you know, she had to she had to hit him with the I I I. And that was uh a lot of people were saying like why we grab her leg and that's and that's exactly what we have to do women like first of all Mary J Blige is a beautiful you know what I'm saying wonderful woman and at the end of the day come on now I don't care if she had a split all the way up to her booty crack showing you should have never been grabbing on her leg and then tried to hype it up it won't even know you know like how you hug somebody around their waist and put your, you know, put, put their hands on your waist. Now nah, he didn't grab the leg. Like on some don't stop, get it, get it. Let me put some in it. Now nah, just wait. <laughs> stop. So yeah, be very mindful of when you approaching, you know what I'm saying? A woman. And I just feel like I'm kind of glad that she did tell him, eh, hey, hey, like put that down. You know what I'm saying? Put that leg down. Y'all, the ink ain't even dropped on your divorce, Tyrese. And you over here hyping up people's legs. Like what made you think that Mary J. Blouse was going to wrap her leg around you with that long split? Go have a seat. So shout out to Mary J. Blouse and her, her birthday. She looked it lovely and true definition of black dog crack, period.
Okay, the next subject will be Keisha calls and Ashanti reschedule the versus battle. Now, you know what? Now, if we can get two elderly women, no shade, no tea, to Gladys Knight and Patti LaBelle, and they can go ahead and push through and lip sing and off lip sing, why is it, what is the deal with Keisha and and uh ashanti now it's to the point where like i said when i was looking into it a lot of people don't even care no more to even have the battle because they feel like it's it now it's overrated like they're just like well now you know i don't even care no more like you know they they consistently reschedule it a lot of people was upset because they rescheduled it the day of because the first time ashanti said she had covid and you know we understand that but you just had found out that but for two or three hours before you guys is gonna go on that you had COVID, and then on top of that, you have to be careful because a lot of people plan around this day. They throw parties, they try to go out, they try to get together. You know, they didn't put the kids to bed, so yeah, that was a very disappointing. So they pushing this back like they list is twenty to thirty tracks long. Like no, Brandy and Monica wasn't even doing this and then there was robberies and y'all so called like each other and y'all still pushing this day back like y'all both need this y'all remember they said keisha Coles is out here selling fish plates you know no shade no tea but i'm just saying keep it pushing now like we don't even care no more now i'm just for the pop in my shunt the cd and go about my business i don't need it thank you and i thank you period um <laughs> okay Last up topic we're going to talk about in this segment will be Jada Scam Small Business. Now, Jada is a influencer, like just the Instagram girl that, well, I'm not going to say an Instagram girl, but she basically uh, was a young lady that made a major profit by uh, selling, I think, merchandise or her or something. And she, you know, for her age, I want to say she was a millionaire by the age of 20 in her early 20s, which is, which is a big accomplishment. And then she started dating and also have a child by one a uh, wonderful up and coming superstar rapper called The Baby. No, not The Baby, Little Baby. I'm sorry. So, uh, so yeah, she has, you know, definitely she has the cloud around her. Anyways, a young, uh, young woman, she has a small business. So therefore she reached out to Jada. She paid Jada $11,000 to advertise a lip gloss that she had. So Jada did not deliver on the day that she said that she wanted to, uh, that she's supposed to post the post and advertisement or whatever, she did not post it on that day. So the girl had disputed the charges and she wanted her money back. Now they went back and forth, of course, and you know, she was upset. So the girl basically lost out on $11,000 because even though she disputed it, the bank did not want to, uh, they basically did not refund the money. And a lot of people, was upset because the girl went on a rant you know the young lady that paid the 11 the small business owner she went on a rant and she kind of exposed jada for her true hand jada excuse for not posting not posting that uh the advertisement because she was going through because at this time her uh her boyfriend had just got blasted by a porn star for having you know relationships with him during his birthday and remind you jada was with him throughout his whole birthday so yeah that was kind of strange so of course she did not want to promote nothing or do something but what people have to understand a job is a job i'm pretty sure a lot of us go through hell and back i know it's been plenty of times where I didn't probably got into an altercation with somebody I was dating, or I could just be going through a lot of stuff, whether it's, you know, kids, whether it's, you know, personal stuff. But at the end of the day, I still have to push through and get a job done. When somebody pay you that money and she's like, oh my God, I would have gave it back to you, or I would have did it, but now you're going to have to wait. You don't treat people like that because regardless of the fact you know, that's why I tell people, stop looking at these celebrities like they're freaking idols. Stop sitting over here like they're not human when it comes down to stuff. Because look how they try to down talk you or talk to you when you basically is not a lap dog for them. Because she's talking about, oh, ain't nobody worried about this and uh, nobody got no, no time to sit. But that's $11,000. That's a lot of money. And you know, like the girl said, she was a single, uh, a single parent and stuff like that. And 
that's something that I truly, you know, you truly have to think about because like I was saying earlier, when you do pay these influencer that has a big father and stuff like that, you will see a profit in your inventory and, you know, your merchandise because at the end of the day, you have people that will go buy the items just because of that so the girl probably was looking at that that was a big investment but business is business keep it professional so jada was definitely in the wrong i would like to hear you guys opinion who do you think was in the wrong do you think that the young the, the business owner was in the wrong because at the time that she's supposed to post an emergency you know had came up and she was in the publicity for the wrong thing so maybe jada probably felt like well hey i don't want to advertise it because i'm already going through this stuff and it's really going to take away, you know, from me advertising this promo for you. So I'd rather do it when this heat die down. Or do you feel like with that, the, um, do you feel like that the customer was right? Like at the end of the day, uh, I paid you the money. I don't care, rain, sleet, or snow. You should have got up there and did a video and promote it on that day because you sitting up here consistently waiting, that's uh, making me wait on my profit that I can be trying to advertise and get out there. Uh, so yeah, so business is business. So that's all for this segment. I hope you guys enjoy. Please like, comment, share. This is the Boomerang Effect with Queen Quee. And I really do appreciate everybody for listening and tuning in. Please leave a voice uh, message if you are on Anchor listening to this. I would love to hear it. And uh, yeah, and look out on look out very soon. We will be having call-ins and I will be calling people, doing different interviews. Love you guys a lot. Mwah.